For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael Elliott with the Valley Medical Center Foundation. Thank you for joining us. First, I want to say that we are removing our face mask because we are practicing social distancing and also to aid our sign language interpreter so that they can see what we are saying. A, a quick update before we get into our show today. There are currently 2,231 cases of COVID-19 here in Santa Clara County and also sad to report that there have been 100 and 15 deaths in this county from COVID-19. Let us hold our loved ones close and dear. Our show today is about how community support in the form of donations and other acts of kindness have made a big difference for our frontline healthcare workers. A little over two and a half months ago, we at the VMC Foundation put out a call for donations to the community for personal protective equipment for healthcare workers. This is masks and gloves and face shields Hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, those kinds of items to help us prepare for COVID-19. The response has been overwhelming. Since that time, over two and a half million items of personal protective equipment have been donated to the Valley Medical Center Foundation and $6 million that's allowed us to buy things like ventilators and testing equipment and other needed supplies. So it's made a real practical impact in our ability to respond, but it's also lifted the spirits of our frontline healthcare workers. And to talk about that today, I am so fortunate to be joined by two extraordinary individuals who are working hard behind the scenes to keep all of us safe. From Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, the Chief Medical, of uh, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Fong Wing. Fong, thank you so much for being here today. And from St. Louis Regional Hospital in Gilroy, the hospital executive and a registered nurse, Gloria Della Merced. Gloria, thank you so much for being here today. And Gloria, we're going to uh, start with you. This has been a, a profoundly stressful time for healthcare workers as they, as they have faced this crisis, both because of the risk that they're having to take and, and the anxiety and, and suffering that they're having to bear witness to. How has the, these donations from the community made a difference to you and your colleagues personally? How has it helped you get through this difficult time? Sure. It uh, does uh, a lot to us. It means a uh, you know, uh, really great uh, joy to all of us uh, healthcare workers. Uh, and it does bring a lot of uh, meaning to all the workers at uh, St. Louis Regional Hospital, O'Connor Hospital, as well as Valley Medical Center. All those donations, overwhelming donations, are very important to us because it does help us have a sense of security that we have all those protective equipments so that we can safely take care of our patients on a daily basis. Recently, we got a very um, uh, nice uh, donation from uh, per personalized cookies from local uh, uh, baker in Gilroy um, resembling a healthcare worker wearing a mask. It sure did brought joy to our frontline staff. That was very cute. Thank you, Gloria. Dr. Noy, let's, let's talk a little bit about why maintaining an adequate supply of PPE is so critical during this particular crisis. What's unique about this disease that, that makes protecting healthcare workers uh, so challenging and so important? Um, so COVID-19, unlike the influenza or the flu infections, is a novel respiratory viral infections that spread a lot easier than influenza itself. There currently is no effective treatment or vaccines. Um, in our day-to-day -day care for COVID patients, in order to keep our healthcare workers safe, we need to be able to have available proper PPE equipment for our um, team. Um, for in that regard, in caring for symptomatic COVID patients, we really need the N95 respirator mask along with all the other equipment that uh, Michael mentioned that's been donated through the foundations. And, and why, and some have asked, why are we having to get this donated from the community? Why can't we just go out and, and buy this stuff? What's, what's, the, what, yeah. what's the reason for asking for donations? So that, that's a um, great question. And I think um, a lot of us wonder why we need this. Under normal circumstances, all healthcare facility has a normal channels where we purchase PPE along with other vital hospital equipment in order for us to serve our patient. 
because COVID-19 is a pandemic infection that affected over 180 countries and territories spanning all six continents, it makes it tremendously challenging in an abrupt period of time to be able to procure PPE for the entire world. So it's no exception to the United States. Um, that's pretty much the reason why. Gloria, is, is, you mentioned the cookies, and this yes. is a public health broadcast, and so normally we don't celebrate cookies, but in this case we, we will, of course. Yes. Uh, has there been a particular donation that has been personally uh, uh, meaningful to you otherwise that, 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 that really stands out in these last few months that's put a smile on your face? Sure. Um, we recently have a donation, um, a local high school student from Gilroy who created a face shield mask in his garage um, you know, he designed it himself and, um, you know, and created more out of the digital print printer. And uh, he brought it uh, down to St. Louis and it sure did um, brought joy and, uh, you know, tears of joy and gratitude to our frontline staff, you know, for a local high school kid to be able to think about that. You know, they feel so um, loved and, um, you know, uh, and they, they the sense of security once again for having that uh, personal protective equipment uh, being made by a local uh, resident, you know, as young as him, you know, and uh, making a lot of difference in in the daily lives of our healthcare workers. That's fantastic. Yes. Gloria, let, let's, let's stay with you. As you know, the, the, the shelter-in-place order has recently been extended uh, to the end of this month, the month of May. Sure. Uh, what are you saying to your, your friends and families and colleagues and why continuing to abide by this order is so critical to helping us get through this crisis. Why, why do we still need to continue to, to shelter in place? Shelter in place, um, you know, staying home, um, stop the spread, and saving more lives. It is such very important that sheltering, you know, remain sheltering in place is very important for us um, healthcare workers. Let us allow us to take care of our sick patients, and you please stay home so that you can continue to stop the spread and at the same time um, you know able to make a difference in the lives of many others. Dr. DeWayne, let's let's talk about hospital readiness. Where are we now as opposed to where we were in March when the first shelter in place order went went into effect? What is this time uh, allowed us the hospital side to do to, to, to help us be better prepared to respond to COVID-19? Um, so the shelter in place in essence have given our um, system along with other system a lot of time to be able to increase our capacity to be able to uh, purchase and secure critical hospital supply including the PPE that we mentioned also the respirators and critical medications is also help us um, to have time to prepare to complete and prepare search planning and most recently um, a lot of facility includes ourselves has implemented uh, the recovery phase and as of today I'm happy to say that uh, we are slowly bringing back elective uh, procedures and surgeries. I want to talk a little bit about why having such a strong public health care system as we do here in Santa Clara County is, is making a difference in, in our response to this crisis. Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, uh, widely regarded as one of the finest public hospitals anywhere, now part of an expanded integrated network with O'Connor Hospital and St. Louis Regional Hospital. What, what makes having a strong public health care system an important tool in helping this community respond to COVID-19? Um, so, uh the core mission of um, public health system is to deliver quality care to all residents, especially the vulnerable populations. Um, we are grateful and uh, very fortunate in our county to have the support of our board supervisor and the leadership of Dr. Jeff Smith, the county executive, to have a robust public hospital system. The acquisition of O'Connor and St. Louis and DePaul has helped us expand our healthcare workforce significantly, also add significant acute bed capacity to our system and allowing us to provide better care to the South County residents. Gloria, and you've seen a, a remarkable transformation at, at St. Louis from, from the hospital potentially closing down to now being part of, of this county network. How is this integration uh, with the County of Santa Clara Health System uh, improved your ability to offer the care you need and, and strengthened St. Louis's ability to respond to COVID-19? 
Sure. Uh, by uh, being part of a uh, large public health system, it allowed us to access more resources and um, you know the technology, state-of-the-art technology. Last year in August, um, we implemented the Epic Health Link, which allowed us you know fast, reliable electronic medical system, which is really a great gift mm -hmm. for for us to be able to better take care of our patients, and also to um, being part of the public uh, health system. We in the early part of the acquisition, we created. Uh, a transfer center that allows a coordinated effort to transfer patients within the hospitals for either for a higher level of care and or more access so to it's, resources. It's a real integrated system. Then. Absolutely, Absolutely, yes. So we're almost out of time. So, so lightning round here, Dr. Nguyen, uh, we are not out of the woods yet with COVID-19. What's your message to everyone as a doctor? What's your message to everyone watching right now on, on what the most important thing they, t they can do to help us get through this? Um, so firstly, I want to thank the collective communities for the tremendous sacrifices that have been made to date. I urge everyone to continue to listen to our public health officer orders. We cannot afford to lose the ground that we have gained. We need more time for the healthcare system to build additional capacity. We also need time for our public de health department to uh, acquire a robust um, system for, um, to, for them to be able to transition from uh, mitigation back to containment and also to give our researchers and scientists time to develop treatments and vaccines. Um, I want to thank you to, uh, to keep, please do keep yourself safe, your family safe and the community. I believe that we will succeed. And Gloria, uh, a, a quick message to folks watching uh, at home on, on why these donations have been appreciated and are making a difference. Sure. So I want to urge the uh, community to please continue to uh, send those donations because they're very important to us. And also to, to please uh, also remember our less fortunate community uh, residents, especially the homeless, the depressed people, people who lost their jobs, and please continue to reach out to our local food banks because they are really needing our help. And for my uh, last message, I strongly would advocate for staying home, stop the spread, saving millions of lives. And thank you so much and stay safe, everyone. Well, thank you, Dr. Nguyen, and thank you, Gloria, for joining us. We still need your help at the Valley Medical Center Foundation. If you'd like to make a donation of personal protective equipment for healthcare workers valley-wide or to make a financial contribution, go to vmcfoundation.org. And I'd also like to remind you that tomorrow is Giving Tuesday Now, a national day of giving that typically happens the week after Thanksgiving, but has been bumped up this year because there are so many important nonprofit organizations that need your financial support so they can keep on providing the essential services that they do. So please, tomorrow, participate in Giving Tuesday now by making a gift to the Valley Medical Center Foundation or to an organization that you care about in your community. Thank you again for joining us. I'd also like to remind you that at 12.30 today, the County of Santa Clara will be hosting a press conference, and that'll be broadcast on Facebook Live. So please tune in for that for some important announcements. I'm Michael Elliott with the Valley Medical Center Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay home and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.